All right, let's try this again. All over. Ooh, oh. <laughs> you kind of mixed it. I got it. <laughs> Over two and a half years ago, we set out on a project to create the ultimate car enthusiast garage. Now what's special about this space I've deemed my piece of paradise is I've been able to do everything in here with my own two hands. From the ceiling to the walls, to the lighting, to the toolbox, to the TV hanging on the wall, to the weight rack, everything in here I've been able to do myself and in doing so saves a ton of money. Now there's been one particular thing which has made the biggest impact on this garage project and I'm standing on it. The floors. Now, when it comes to these garage floor coating kits, there's a lot of brands out there. One of the most popular being rust -Oleum. There's a ton of positive reviews on these kits, but there's also a lot of negative stuff out there as well. I will say from experience, if you prepare the floor and apply it right, your results are amazing. If you don't, not so much. So hopefully we're gonna show you today is how easy this is on clean concrete. This is gonna be a new build. We're gonna acid etch the floor tonight and go back in a few days and apply that brand new rust -Oleum black epoxy onto the floor. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get the party started. Are by chance new and joining me for the first time a special aloha and welcome to my dream vehicle so guys i'm just a crazy hawaiian texan that loves cars and i've been blessed to find a way to create kind of a small business out of my passion which is this channel so if you're enjoying the content at any point in the video feel free to scroll down hit the subscribe button below and join the ohana we have a ton coming up this year and uh, i'm excited to get this floor done because i haven't done a black epoxy floor yet and i'm really excited to see how this thing turns out this is a fun drive down some back roads because this is this is how we get to this house <laughs> oh i love this car It's been a few months since you've been on the channel, Pops. Everybody keeps asking about you. It's like, where's your dad at? Did he die? <laughs> no, he's still around. Taking his truck apart. <laughs> That's actually a fact. Hi, Mom. Yay. Congrats to the new homeowner. Yay! And the home seller, by the way. And free labor. <laughs> All right, here's our garage in question. Two car garage, brand new home. The nice part about brand new concrete is it's saturated with oil and been parked on for years and years. So the concrete's been sitting here for about a year. It's taking a year to build this house. Gotta love COVID supply chain. So with that, the concrete is completely set hard, ready to go. This is gonna be a relatively simple two-step process. We have an acid etch that's going on today. We'll come back late this week and apply the epoxy. So what the acid etch is going to do is in order for the epoxy to adhere to the concrete correctly, you have to open up the pores on the concrete. Another thing you can do if you don't acid etch is grind the floor. That's what I had to do on mine because of all the oil and all the saturation. I ground down the top layer, but since it's a brand new build, there's not a lot of nasty stuff on here. So we're just gonna acid etch it and then go for the epoxy. We went ahead and scraped and tried to clean up most of those corners there. What we'll do before we finish this up, we're gonna come and patch some of these cracks prior to applying epoxy, but before we even get there, we're gonna wet the floor down, add the acid etch, brush it in, and then we're gonna power wash everything out. All right, you can crank her up. Low is nice and wet. There we are. All right, we're gonna fill up the acid etch. We have a little spray bottle here. See guys, easy as that, simple. All right, we're done, I think four or five passes by now. You can feel the concrete get more and more coarse as you continue on, time to power wash. 
new neighbors. So if you look close there, you'll see that reflection, see the little pores that are opened up now. That's what the whole process of the acid etching is for. That way when we throw the epoxy down, it's got something to grab onto. So if you threw the epoxy down without that, pull a car in here with hot tires, pull the car out, it pulls the epoxy floor right up with the tires. So those little pores will allow it to adhere correctly. Now you might be asking yourself, why in the world do you just flatten your tire, kick it, and walk away? Well, I've just demonstrated what happens about every six to eight weeks between me and this car. Now my relationship with this car is pretty simple. It hates me, I hate it, but we've learned to live with that. For no reason at all, this tire right here goes completely flat about every six to eight weeks, and I've yet to really dig into why that is. Now the main concern there is you can't predict when this tire is gonna go flat. Sometimes it's in the driveway before I'm leaving for work, but in more unfortunate circumstances, at work when I'm trying to get home, I'll come out from the office and it'll be completely flat in the parking lot. So I've actually been wanting to show this to you guys for several weeks now, but it's doing so well that every time they get inventory in, it sells out almost immediately. But what it is, is the Fantic X8 Apex Tire Inflator. And whoop de do, it inflates tires. But it has several built-in capabilities you're gonna want for yourself, and I'm gonna want for myself moving forward, given my relationship with this shit box. Be nice to get home from work sometimes. Well, welcome to what I would call is a typical Thursday night trying to get home from work. But fortunately, I have my Fantic Air Inflator. It has a bunch of built-in capabilities like an LED light there at the top, multiple chargers there for USB at the bottom. But my favorite part of this is the auto stop function it has. You can preset a predetermined PSI, turn it on, walk off, and it will automatically shut off once your tire is inflated. It's gonna be super handy, especially in the winter time where it's freezing. Now, what we're gonna do now is reinflate the tire that I just deflated. This thing can handle anything from ATVs to soccer balls, the bicycles, the motorcycles to full-size vehicles. It comes with a nice accessory bag with everything you might need for your various inflating applications. But for this one, we're just gonna need this guy right here. So let's go ahead and see how quickly the X8 Apex can reinflate this entire rear tire on our Mercedes. <sighs> So there we go guys, just over seven minutes put us at 38 PSI. Now I should really be running this tire at like 30 or 32 PSI. So if I were to inflate it correctly, about six minutes puts me back to where this tire should be and I can simply go home. Now, no, honestly, I should probably get this tire repaired, but I'm not going to, but just because I hate this car. So guys, there's a link in the description below. Fantix sells their products via Amazon and they sell out relatively quick. So check out if they have inventory. If you do, grab it while you can, because for me, this has really been a game changer. If you guys go on road trips or if you guys have ATVs and go off-roading. And there's also a discount code just for you guys in the description below. So go check out Fantic, go pick up your own X8 Apex. I love mine and I hope you guys do as well. All right, back to the garage. We are back, boys. It's time to head back over and do our final coat of black Rust-Oleum epoxy. Now, one particular thing we are doing to that floor that we did not do on ours, which I've been continually debating was a mistake on my end, was flakes. We are gonna throw flakes down on the floor we are doing today. This one has absolutely no flakes at all. Pros, it looks fantastic, it's easy to clean, it's very shiny. Cons, it's an ice skating rink. You get any moisture or water on this floor and you are, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a bit slick. So we gotta move pretty quick because my dad's pretty much already over there. Black epoxy, we got our flakes, we got 650 horsepower. Let's party. Back again. 
What's up, Bops? How's your day? Good. All right, so the acid edge did a really good job of getting this floor prepared. It's been four days since we laid it, and you can kind of see where that acid is eat through the, I guess the outer layer of the concrete and opening up these small pores. Yeah, this concrete looks really good, nice and dry. So we also have this, which is our concrete patch and repair, same brand, Rust-Oleum. This is stuff I used on my garage and it's used to kind of get all these small imperfections. So things like this and also cracks in the floor, such as this one going across, we'll fill that with the putty, scrape it flat. You can actually sand it down if you want to, we're not going to, but all these little small divots and stuff, if you do the epoxy over the top of this, you're gonna see it. So all this little stuff, we're gonna start puttying it. Patchwork is done. You can tell by the gray mess on the floor. So we're gonna let this sit for about 20, 30 minutes and we'll be ready for epoxy. So this guy's laying some tape at the very edge of the garage. Something about this epoxy coating, you cannot leave it in direct sunlight, meaning you can't coat this section of the driveway because if sun hits it all day long, it'll bleach, and it'll look ugly. Yeah, we can close. What's nice is the wind's kind of dying down as the day's coming to a close. Anything out here that might walk away? Oh. Alright, I'm starting here. <laughs> Here's one of the four kits. We're gonna use three of these guys. Mallory, you wanna do the honors? There you go. Now you gotta mix. Now you gotta mix. Oh, okay. Although it'd be very shiny and terrible. Make sure you roll these edges because the product doesn't get stuck in these edges. You do want to mix it. Completely. We have the epoxy and a hardener together. It gives us, what, 30, 45 minutes before it starts tacking up. Although it's good to have two hands. You want to be doing the border while doing everything else. Because this stuff isn't cheap. Hello! So It's so shiny, I can see a reflection, Junior. See, see a reflection. reflection. Alright, for those of you out there that are curious, a two and a half car kit. This is the appropriate thickness and how far it goes. So we essentially got, what was that, 65, 70% of the garage. So we're opening our last of three kits that we're going to use. Lay this last one down, flake as we get out, and then we're done. Attack. What? I thought my GoPro was over there. <laughs> <laughs> nope, coming back tomorrow. <laughs> okay, with this last round, I'll almost hit this. Is this your home? This is awkward. I just paint the edge. I told you it'd bleed through. Every single time, no matter what, no matter what tape you use, what method you do, you're always gonna have that bleeding out from under. So we actually planned for this. We taped it right at the edge, knowing that we're gonna need to paint probably an inch of this all the way down. All right, guys, that's it, we're done. This thing looks fantastic. Now I'll tell you, the end result is one, the preparation, and two, the amount of product you use. This is basically one and a half, two and a half car kits. If that doesn't make any sense at all, this is enough product 
according to Rust-Oleum, to do a 3.7 car, five car garage. So three and three quarters car garage is the amount of product we've laid on the floor. And this is when you get the perfect finish. If you do anything less than this, you will have spots that are semi-transparent. You can kind of see through the black into the concrete. I will say that we still need to work on this front edge. No matter what type of tape we lay, it always bleeds through. So what we tried to do, we went back to the very end and just ran a paintbrush and try to clean that edge up as much as possible. And what we're gonna do is jump to a quick clip in about uh, a week. I'll see you guys in a few days. And we're back about a week and a half later. Man. That turned out so good. What's really cool about this floor is you can kind of do whatever you want with these chips. Now, we let the owner of this garage apply the chips herself so she can really feel like she's been a part of this process and creation. And this is kind of, I guess, a medium application. You can go super heavy with the chips, which is pretty much 90 to 100% coverage, which gives you really good traction. Or you can do less chips, which gives you more black. So you got kind of a little bit of a Milky Way vibe going on. And they've been parking in here all week, as you can see with some of the tire tracks, but again, with this floor, it's that easy to clean. Man, here's some close-ups. Well, that's the black Rust-Oleum rock solid floor. Super happy the way this came out. I've mentioned this before and I'm gonna say it again. The amount of product and the preparation are just the two things that really need to be done right to get a good finish. If you look close there, how thick that coating went on, this is nearly three times as much as they recommend. And with that, you get the perfect finish. Lots of things you can do with this. Hope you enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please go ahead and smash that like button below. Helps me out. Helps us continue to grow. If you guys want to see some of the content that's coming up with the Silverados, the ZL1, and the 2020 Trail Boss, be sure to subscribe. We got big things coming this year, vehicles, but also a building that's going to be right back there. Yeah, it's happening this year, guys. This garage is getting bigger. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in a few days for our next one. Aloha. Just park it right there next to the Mercedes. Thanks, bud. I'll close the hood for you. you working hard? Hardly working. <laughs> gotcha! That's a dad joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm.